Good morning, church. Let's talk about Judges chapter 19. This is a terrible chapter. It's confusing. It's culturally foreign. It, there's a lot about this chapter that ought to make you, it ought to make your skin crawl. Um, but this is, this is the word of the Lord, and, and there's something for us to draw from it. So let's take a, a close look. This is a, a different Levite than we've been reading about in the previous chapters. Uh, that's a, a, a Levite, again, is a man whose who's calling is to serve in the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. He's, he is uh, trained to serve in the temple. He's supposed to be a holy man. Uh, he has a concubine. This isn't his wife, but this is a woman who's committed to him for his use. Um, culturally, not that un unexpected. Um, and uh, so she cheats on him runs away to her father's house, and he goes to get her. That is a, a gracious move culturally. For us, very foreign, but uh, the man is acting with grace and is seeking to draw this woman back to himself instead of leaving her to fend for herself or to be a, a draw on her family. Um, so there's this business with the father-in-law about um, kind of being slow to get out of town and head back home. Uh, and as, as a result of this delay, he's um, traveling into Jerusalem, but isn't going to make it into town quite on time. And so he's, his servant says to him, let's pull aside in this city over here um, and uh, we'll, we'll find some rest. And he says, no, that's a city of pagans. We're going to go to Gibeah, which is a, a town that is um, a Jewish town. It belongs to the tribe of Benjamin. The people here should be people of God. They should be faithful. They should show hospitality. They should take us in and help us. So they go into town. Um, the people of Gibeah refuse to take him in until this old man comes and they puts him up at his house. And then the town gets angry about it. And they come, um, they're seeking to rape the man and probably kill him. Uh, the people of God, this is, this is where we've gotten by the end of the book of Judges, as they've turned away again and again. Um, refusing hospitality at first, that's culturally pretty bad move, but this is how, how bad it's come that they've come to rape the man. And, and the man uh, that owns the home says, okay, well, don't do that to him. That's too inhospitable. Instead, here, take my young daughter and his concubine and do with them what you will. And they, you know, they don't want to have any of that. They want the man. Um, and uh, that's how twisted and sick they are. And, and the man says, no, we can't, we can't do that. And, and tries to shout him down. And he just throws uh, the Levites concubine out to them. They have their way with her. Uh, and I, I, as I read it, by the end of the night, she's dead. Um, I, you know, he, she's laying on the ground outside the house. Uh, what the Levite and the man thought of what was happening outside, the Bible doesn't tell us. Um, but by the end of the night, he comes out and she's lying at the doorstep and he says, get up, it's time to go. Um, and she doesn't respond. It, it seems like she's dead. And so he puts her on his donkey and he cuts her up. Um, and this isn't a, a judgment on her, I don't think, but rather because he sends the pieces of her to the tribes. It's a, it's a, it's a damnation against Israel saying, look how far we've come. Um, we were God's chosen people. We were to be blessed in this land and we were to be a blessing. We were to demonstrate his glory to the nations, and instead this is where we are. Um, this is the kind of thing that is supposed to make your skin crawl. It's supposed to make you really uncomfortable. Because sin looks like this. Sin makes us feel this way. There's sin in our hearts. It may not be this sin, and this is ugly. But what's the sin in your heart? How does it make you feel? Do you just gloss over it? Because what happens after, as time goes on is what happens to the people of Israel. You get more and more used to glossing over sin, and it grows until you don't look like yourself anymore. So pray for God to convict you of your sin and to uh, help you to repent, to live in faithfulness, so that you don't look monstrous like the people of Israel.